Welcome to session two. In this presentation, we will discuss steps to solving a medical coding exam case study. But first, I want to introduce you to the team. First up, Mr. Sandeep. Mr. Sandeep coming to you live from Abu Dhabi. He is an AMCI co-lead instructor. Next up, Miss Eva coming to you live from the state of Florida. She is also a co-lead instructor and the intern coordinator. And finally, myself, Mrs. J, I'm the curriculum director at AMCI. Now, let's meet the AMCI interns. We have Miss Anubama, followed by Miss Carla, Miss Courtney, Miss Dolly, Miss Vivian, and Miss Melissa. Oh, goals of the presentation. We only have one cardiovascular system scenarios. Now let's talk about how to solve a multiple choice case study scenario the AMCI way for the board exam. This is how we do it. We teach you to highlight your key terms and this key on the right tells you the colors that you should use and for what. A yellow highlighter should be used for diagnoses, all diagnoses, signs and symptoms. The green will be for procedures. So if you have a green highlighter, the green will be used to highlight only procedures and pink, these are inclusive or bundled items, all right? Once you've done your highlighting, you're gonna to have to document your inventory, that's your procedures, diagnoses, and select a primary code. Which diagnosis is primary? Which procedure is primary? Then you're gonna review all pertinent guidelines and finally, the code that best matches your inventory list is often the correct code or a code that is pertinent to a guideline that will be your best code. All right, so here are some do nots. When you're highlighting, you can kind of get discombobulated. So we've compiled some things that you don't even have to highlight. Number one, don't highlight things observed by the physician because you cannot code for them. Number two, don't highlight closures. If a provider or surgeon is closing up a surgical site, there's no need to highlight it. However, if it involves a skin procedure or skin defect closure, you may definitely have to code that. So if it's closing a surgical site other than skin defects or wounds or lesions, you do not code it or highlight it. Also, you don't highlight bleed control, hemostasis, because that's pretty customary and it's bundled into the procedure code. You don't highlight drains, irrigation of the surgical site. Nope. And you don't highlight installation and removal of clamps and trocars because that these are used to open up or maintain the surgical or operative site so the physician can view what they're doing, particularly if it's an open procedure. Also, you don't highlight dressings. And finally, you do not highlight surgical risks. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, I think you're ready to get started and I'm gonna hand it over to Mr. Sandeep. All right, Mr. Sandeep, take it away. I'm sure this is all your favorite chapter. <laughs> and to read out the first scenario, uh, I would invite Ms. Jolly to come up. Ms. Jolly, uh, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep. Hi, coders. All right, so I will start off with the question, what CBT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? 
A33465-33530, TA2.6XXA, I07.9, answer B, 0545T, TA82.6XXA, I07.9, C, 33460-33465, TA2.6XXA, I07.9, answer D, 33465 TA2.6 XXA I07.9. Preoperative diagnosis prosthetic valve endocarditis. Postoperative diagnosis same. Operation re replacement of a 10 year old tricuspid valve using a 31 millimeter Carpentier Edwards pericardial bioprosthesis. Procedure. The patient was brought to the operating room. <clears throat> excuse me. The patient was brought to the operating room and having the appropriate monitoring devices placed, he was intubated and general endotracheal anesthesia was achieved. The patient was prepared and draped in the usual sterile fashion. The chest was entered via a median sternotomy incision. Simultaneous to this, the right common femoral vein was dissected. The pericardium was opened, the patient was given systemic heparin and the ascending aorta and superior vena cava or cannulated. Similarly, the right common femoral vein was cannulated. The patient was started on bypass. Caval snares were placed and the right atrium was opened. An intraatrial thrombus excised and cultured. The prosthetic valve was excised. The annulus was debrided and irrigated. The valve was sized and a 31 millimeter valve was selected. Pledgeted 2-0 ethibon sutures were passed circumferentially around the annulus in a ventriculoatrial fashion. These sutures were tied and the valve was inspected. The valve was found to be well seated and the atrium was closed with running 4-0 proline sutures. The patient was rewarmed, de-aired, and then weaned from bypass with low-dose enotropic support. Temporary drains were placed and the mediastinum was policed for hemostasis and the sternum reapproximated with stainless steel wire. The femoral vein and groin wounds were closed with layered vicral sutures. The patient was taken back to the cardiac surgical unit in stable condition after tolerating the procedure well. All right, coders, you have two and a half minutes and your time starts now.
Okay, coders, that was two minutes and 45 seconds. I know this is a little bit big scenarios. Uh, so you can keep working on this and put your answers, keep putting your answers in the chat. And I also want to, okay. Uh, and I also want to uh, tell you that you can take a screenshot of these scenarios because these uh, sessions will be only live sessions uh, and uh, no recorded uh, version will be available. So uh, going ahead, you can also solve them and work on them uh, later after the class. So please do take a screenshot if you need to take. Okay. Yes, now I will move on and solve the case for you. The pre-operative diagnosis and the post-operative diagnosis for this case is the same and it is going to be prosthetic valve endocarditis. The operation performed is a re replacement of a 10-year-old uh, tricuspid valve. Uh, the patient was intubated and endotracheal anesthesia was given uh, and incision was made in a st uh, sternotomy. Uh, the right common femoral uh, vein was dissected. The pericardium was opened. Ascending iota and superior vena cava were cannulated. The right common femoral vein was cannulated and patient was started on a bypass. The prosthetic valve was excised and the valve sized and a 31 mm valve was selected and passed circumferentially around the annulus. So the correct answer to this scenario is going to be option a. Let me see how many of you have got. Okay, I think this is a great scenario to kickstart the study session. And let's go and solve this one together. These are your inventories. The procedure inventory, we are having a re-replacement of a 10-year-old tricuspid valve. The diagnosis inventory, we are having a prosthetic uh, valve endocarditis. So coders, do you know what is an endocarditis? Do you have any idea on endocarditis? Yes, uh, there's a diagrammatic image now. The endocarditis is actually a life-threatening inflammation of the inner lining of the heart chambers and the valve, which is known as the endocardium. So when you're having a, a prosthetic uh, valve endocarditis, it means the, uh, the inflammation will be in the inside the prosthetic valve. So that's what, uh, yes, so that's what the diagnosis uh, we had in the scenario. And these are the code options. So select the code that best matches your inventory. This is going to be our friend. Let's look into the first one, 33460. Valvectomy tricuspid valve. So once again, I want to bring the attention towards other what, which one I said to select the code that best matches your inventory. Does this match our inventory coders? What do you think? Our procedure inventory, we had a re replacement of 10 year old tricuspid valve. Yes, no, it's not the valvectomy procedure which is uh, performed. That doesn't match the procedure inventory. So, right away, it's a wrong answer. Let's look into B. It is a 0545D, which is coding for a transcatheter tricuspid valve and less reconstruction. Uh, through a percutaneous approach. And this is also not matching the procedure inventory. Uh, it is coding for a percutaneous approach uh, pro surgery and we had an open surgery which in which we had an incision in the sternum. Yes, not matching. Here we go, yes. Option B is also the wrong one. And I, uh, I saw like majority of uh, traffic was between the option A and option D. And let's look what's wrong with option D. 33465, which is coding for re -replace, uh, replacement of tricuspid with pulmonary bypass. And the uh, option A is having 33530 as well, which is the correct answer because option D is an incomplete option. And let's see what 33530 is coding for. It is coding for an additional add-on code which states that reoperation on coronary artery bypass procedures or valve procedures 
more than one month after the original operations. So how uh, old is our tricuspid valve? I'm sorry. Our tricuspid uh, valve is 10 year old. You can see that in the procedure inventory. Yes. I see some aha moment out there. Yes. So these are priceless. So did you got uh, the correct answers, Cordes? Any questions on this one? Mm -hmm. So that's why we picked option A as the correct one. Uh, we selected uh, the cell option A3350 because uh, this is an add-on code for any procedures which is performed on a valve. So it, which if it is more than one month old. So you can see uh, use uh, 33530 with, uh, in conjunction with a series of codes. So we must use them. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's being forensic. Yes, so we must use them if a reoperation is performed is that clear shall we move to the next one okay yes that was a uh -huh moment so that was a great scenario i guess let's move to the next one coders and let's invite miss uh courtney to read the scenario for us. And uh, by the way, thank you, Ms. Jolly, for reading the first scenario for me. Ms. Courtney. You can All take right, it coders. So what CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? A, 33534, 33511, 33508, I25.10, E78.0, B, 33518, 35510, I25.10, E78.0, C, 33534, 33518, 35508, I25.10, E78.0, or D, 33534-33518, I25.10, E78.0. Preoperative diagnosis, coronary artery disease, hypercholesterolemia, postoperative diagnosis, same. Operation, coronary artery bypass graft times four, left internal mammary artery to obtuse marginal artery, right internal mammary artery to the left anterior descending artery, reverse saphenous vein to the first diagonal artery, and reverse saphenous vein graft to the right posterior descending artery. Indications. The patient is a 39-year-old gentleman with a history of hypercholesterolemia and hypertension who presents with a positive stress test. Catheterization revealed left main circumflex disease as well as total right coronary artery disease. Procedure. The patient was brought to the operating room and placed supine on the operating table. After the induction of gender, general endotracheal anesthesia, the patient was prepared and draped in the usual sterile fashion. We proceeded to harvest a saphenous vein endoscopically from the left lower extremity. At the same time, the lima and then rima were harvested by open technique. The pericardium was opened and attacked up to form a cradle. The patient was heparinized. The conduits were prepared for bypass. We opened the cardiac cradle, cannulated the ascending aorta and right atrium. Antigrade and retrograde cardioplegia catheters were placed. At this time, we placed the patient on cardiopulmonary bypass. The targets were examined and they seemed to be graftable. At this point, we placed a cross clamp on the ascending aorta and arrested the heart with antigrade and retrograde cardioplasia, topical ice, and the patient was cooled down to 32 degrees Celsius. At this point, we exposed the territory of the RD RPDA. It was found to be a modest target. A reverse saphenous vein graft to right posterior descending artery was fashioned using 7-0 proline. Flow was measured at 50 milliliters per minute. It was found to be a modest target. A reverse saphenous vein graft to right posterior descending artery was fashioned using, oh, sorry guys, just read that one. Next, we directed our attention to the first diagonal artery. It was also a modest target. It was opened. The anastomosis was fashioned using the reverse saphenous vein graft with 70 proline. Flow was measured at 60 milliliters per minute. At this point, we exposed the territory of the obtuse marginal. The left internal mammary was prepared. 
The lima to obtuse marginal graft was performed with 7-0 proline. There was excellent hemostasis. We tacked down the wings of the mammary. The bulldog was placed on the mammary. At this point, we performed two proximal aortomies with the 4.0 millimeter aortic punch. Two proximal anastomoses were fashioned after the veins were cut to length with 6-0 proline. Bulldogs were placed on each of these veins. We rewarmed the patient. The territory at the left anterior descending artery was exposed. The remo was prepared. The remo to left anterior descending coronary artery, LAD, anastomosis was fashioned using the 7-0 proline. Once this was completed, the wings of the mammary were tacked. At this point, warm cardioplasia was given in retrograde fashion. The bulldogs were removed from both the lima and the rima. We resumed the perfusion of the heart. We de-aired the root of the aorta and removed the cross clamp. The patient resumed a normal sinus rhythm. The sites were oversewn. The vein grafts were de-aired in the usual fashion. We examined the proximal and distal anastomosis and there was excellent hemostasis. Three Blake drains were placed, two in the mediastinum and one into the right pleura as we did not enter the left pleural space. The patient was weaned off cardiopulmonary bypass without any difficulty. The sternum was reapproximated with heavy stainless steel wire in a mattress fashion. The pectoralis fascia and subcutaneous tissue were approximated with one vicral skin and four zero vicral as well as dermabond. The lower extremities were closed in a similar fashion. The instrument counts were correct. The patient was transferred to the SICU in stable condition. All right, coders, your time starts now.
and that is a uh, two minutes and 45 second coders that's time uh how do i sound is it clear miss uh, coders am i audible okay because my voice did a uh, break uh last time when miss courtney was reading the scenario okay that's good thank you thank you for letting me letting me know uh coders so this is all about cabg cabbage procedure and uh, how many of you love coding cabbage scenarios? This was definitely one of my favorite in cardiovascular. When I started, I, it felt like a little bit difficult, but once I got the trick, this is uh, this was one of the easiest uh, in the cardiovascular system. So let's uh, solve the scenario. The preoperative and postoperative diagnosis is also same in this scenario as well, and it is coronary artery disease and hypercholesterolemia. Operation performed is a coronary artery bypass. There is a four graft. One is from left internal mammary artery to obtuse marginal artery, right internal mammary artery to left anterior uh, descending artery, a reverse cephanous vein to the first diagonal artery, and a reverse cephanous vein graft to the right posterior descending artery. The patient was placed in a supine position. General endotracheal anesthesia was given. Cephanous vein endoscopically uh, was harvested from left lower extremity. So I want to bring everyone's attention uh, towards this particular part coders. The cephanous vein was uh, endoscopically harvested. Okay, let's move on. Uh, at the same time, the uh, left internal mammary artery lima and right internal mammary artery uh, were harvested by open technique. The pericardium was opened and the cardiac, uh, we opened the cardiac car cradle as well and placed the patient on a cardiopulmonary bypass. A reverse cephanous vein graft to the right posterior descending artery was done. Uh, and the first diagonal uh, artery was also open. The anastomosis was fashioned using reverse cephanous vein graft with seven proline, seven hash uh, zero proline. And then uh, lima to the obtuse marginal graft was performed with the seven hash zero proline. And rima to the left anterior descending, uh, anterior descending coronary artery anastomosis was also fashioned. At this point, warm cardioplegia was given in a retrograde fashion and we resumed the per, uh, perfusion of the heart and the patient received normal sinus rhythm and we end off the cardiopulmonary bypass without any difficulty. So the answer to this question is going to be option C. Let me have a quick look into the chat and Codus, you can take uh, the screenshot of this scenario. I'll give you two seconds for that. What is Lima and Rima? Uh, you can see uh, it is Lima is for a left internal mammary artery graft taken from left internal mammary, uh, mammary artery and uh, Rima is for right internal uh, artery mammary. Okay, I hope you have taken the screenshot and let's solve this one, go this together. So, uh, as you know, a uh, CABG procedure, it is actually done to divert the blood around the narrowed or the clogged parts of the major arteries, and it helps in improving the blood flow and oxygen supply to the heart. You can see the diagram over here. Let me show you. Yes, here. So the artery, if it is uh, having any block or narrowing by doing a coronary artery bypass graft, it will improve the blood flow and oxygen supply to the heart. Thus, it will prevent from myocardial infarction. So this is the procedure which is performed and we are having four uh, graft used in our scenario. Those, these are those graft, left internal mammary artery to the obtuse marginal artery, right internal mammary artery to the left anterior descending artery and so these two are arteries which is used, artery graft which is used, and we are having a uh, two vein graft also, which was harvested endo, uh, uh, by endovenous method. So we have reverse cephanous vein to the first diagonal artery and reverse cephanous vein to the right posterior descending artery. So this image uh, doesn't exactly uh, depicts the scenario which we are having. Still, uh, we can uh, look into it 
and see like here we go left internal uh, memory graph was made and this one left internal memory art was uh, graph was taken and was made to obtuse marginal artery and where is the obtuse marginal artery here we go this is the obtuse marginal artery so a graph will be formed like this similarly right internal memory artery graft will be uh, placed into left anterior descending artery and this is the left anterior descending artery so another graph will be like this in similar manner the remaining two graft also will be made so i hope it is a little bit uh, clear with the help of this diagram how uh, the cabg procedures are done And let's move on to the coding part. So procedure inventory, as I said, four graphs was used, two artery and two veins. The diagnosis inventory, we are having coronary artery disease and hypercholesterolemia. And this is going to be our friend in solving this scenario. This is our FDR for bypass uh, graft coding. So types of the graft, which we have to check first, veins or arteries. We already checked we are having two arteries and two veins. And number of graft, which is again important. We are having four graft used. All the harvests are bundled except upper extremity, a vein and artery. So any other harvest from a any other harvest harvested graft other than the upper extremities will be bundled to the CABG procedure so we don't have to code them separately. Next one, if combo code, first arteries, then code the veins from the combination section. This is very, very important coders since we are having a combination uh, of coronary artery bypass graft performed here. First, we will give the code for the arteries later on for the veins from the combined code section. Next one is also important for this scenario. Endoscopic harvest are coded separately. So as I said, I told you all to bring your attention to this particular point. We have veins, which is vein graft, which is harvested endoscopically. So in the scenario, we will have to code them separately. Okay, let's move on. Let me take a quick look into the chats. <laughs> Too many hamburgers and french fries. <laughs> that was good one. <laughs> okay, these are our code options. Let's look into the option D. 33534 and 33518. What it is coding for? 33533534 is coding for coronary artery bypass graft using atrial graft to coronary artery. This is a good code selection. As I said, in our FDR, this is a combination of uh, uh, graphs used. So we have to first code for the artery codes. We have coronary artery bypass graft using atrial graft. How many graphs has been used coders here? How many eight arteries has been used? You can put your answers in the chat. This is the interactive session coders. I want to be 100% interactive. Let's, let's do some fun coding yes two arteries yes so there are two arteries used so this is the correct code selection and let's look at the next one three three five one eight which will be coding for coronary artery uh, bypass graft using venous and artery graft two venous grafts so this is also the correct code selection but option d is wrong can you say why any guesses Yes, yes, there you go, yes. It has no uh, codes for uh, endoscopic harvest of the veins. That's why option D is a wrong one. That's a good catch of the guidelines. Good, good work, good work, good observation. So that's why option D is a wrong one. Now let's look into the next one, option A, which is coding for 33534 and 33518. 
which both are correct codes. Uh, sorry, here option A, we, have, we are having 33511. Let's see what's 33511 is. 33511 is coding for coronary artery bypass using two veins. So option A is wrong because as I said, if we are having using a combination of arteries and vein in CABG, we have to first code the artery codes and then we have to select the vein codes from the combination section. We have to select the codes from this particular part. We can't code the artery separate, we can't code the vein separate, vein, venous graph separate. She got it coders? Mm. Yes, that's why option A is the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Now let's look into the next. Option B, 33534 and 33518 which both are the correct one, 33534, 33518, and it is having codes for 35500. Uh, Let's see what 35500 is. This is coding for harvest of upper extremity veins, one segment for lower extremity or coronary artery bypass graft. This is wrong in uh, two ways. First one, we have a veins, which is uh, harvested from Cephenous vein, which is a lower extremity, and 335500 three, uh, three, is coding for harvesting of upper extremity vein. So you got it, this is wrong in one way. And second way, this is not coding for an endoscopic harvest. In the parenthesis, you can see for endoscopic harvest, we have to use code 33508, which is endoscopically harvest, uh, endoscopic, endoscopy surgical including video assisted harvest of veins for coronary artery bypass procedures. List this additional to the codes for the primary procedure and that will be option C which is coding for 33534. The artery codes, two, the codes for two arteries, 33518 which is coding for two veins and 33508 which is coding for harvesting of upper extremity uh, we, I'm um, sorry, harvesting of um, vein by endoscopic procedures. Is that clear, coders? How are you feeling about the first CABG procedure? Any doubts on this one? Okay, okay. Uh, please go ahead and take the screenshot if you need so that I can move on to the next one. Yeah, got one more CABG. Can I move to next one, coders? Yes, thank you. I will move on to the next one. This is also a little bit bigger than the last one. So I would give uh, Miss Vivian the honors to read this scenario. Thank you, Miss Courtney, for reading out the first scenario for me. Miss Vivian, the stage is all yours. Okay, coders. Um, what CPT and ICD-10 CM codes are reported? A, 33406, 33533, modifier 51, 33518, 33508, I-35.0, I-25.110, B, 33405, 33503, modifier 51, 33513, I-25.110, C, 33405, 33503-modifier 51, 33517, 33508, I-35.0, I-25.110, or D, 33405-33503-modifier 51, 33518, 33508, I-35.0, and D, and I-25.110. The preoperative -op, pre diagnosis is severe two-vessel coronary artery disease and moderate valve aortic steno stenosis. Postoperative diagnosis is the same. The operation is triple vessel coronary artery bypass grafting, left internal mammary artery to the left anterior descending coronary artery, reverse the venous vein to the first diagonal branch, and a ramus intermedius. Aortic valve replacement with a 23 millimeter bovine pericardial bioprosthesis. The anesthesia is general. 
indications, this is a 66-year-old white male who presented with unstable angina pectoris. He underwent coronary angiography and had a 70% occlusion in the distal left main, an 80% occlusion in the proximal left anterior descending coronary artery, or LAD, a 95% occlusion of the proximal ramus intermedius, and a 70% occlusion in the proximal diagonal branch. The right coronary artery had no significant lesions. His aortic valve gradient was 40 millimeters Hg by catheter and echocardiogram. He presented with a new onset of angina pectoris and significant coronary artery disease. Surgery was warranted. Procedure, while monitoring the intra-arterial blood pressure and EKG, the patient was anesthetized without incident. The entire chest, abdomen, and both legs were prepared and draped into the usual sterile fields. A median sternotomy was performed. The left internal mammary artery was dissected off the chest wall. Simultaneously, the greater saphenous vein was endoscopically removed or harvested from the left leg and the layers were closed with vicryl and dermal bonds. A sterile comp compressive dressing was applied. The pericardium was opened and tacked up to form a cradle. After heparinization, the ascending aorta and the right atrial appendage were cannulated and connected to cardiopulmonary pul bypass using a membrane oxygenator with an initial flow of 4.9 liters per minute. Antigrade and retrograde cardioplegia catheters were inserted. On bypass, a left ventricular vent was placed through the right superior pulmonary vein. The coronaries were dissected out and found to be suitable for grafting. Although the circumflex um, branches were less than one millimeter in diameter, the ramus intermedius was identified as well as the diagonal branch, which was small. The heart was then arrested with cold enriched blood cardioplegia, given additional, given antegrade after cross clamping at the ascending aorta. Once diastolic arrest was obtained, the heart was cooled with cold blood cardioplegia, given initially antegrade and subsequently retrograde. Additional doses were given retrograde as well as down the vein graft. At the end, a hot shot was given. Systemic temperature was lowered to 32 degrees. Myocardial temperature was maintained around 20 degrees. The ramus intermedius was opened first. This was found to be a 1.5 to 2.0 millimeter vessel. An end-to-end -end anastomosis using a segment of reverse saphenous vein was then performed with the running 0.70 proline suture fat technique. This was felt to be a good graft with a flow of 90 milliliters per minute. Next, the first diagonal branch was grafted in a similar manner with a second segment of reverse saphenous vein with a resultant of flow of 50 milliliters per minute. The left internal mammary artery was anastomosed to the left anterior descending coronary artery in an end-to-end -end fashion using the in-situ left mammary with running 80 proline suture technique. The diagonal branch was a 1.5 millimeter vessel and the LID was a 1.5 to 2.0 millimeter vessel. Next, the aorta was opened in an oblique transverse fashion and a moderately calcified trileaflet aortic valve was examined. The left ventricle was irrigated with saline the annulus sized to a 23 millimeter pericardial tissue valve, model number 3000, serial number 55555. The valve was sutured in a superannular fashion with interrupted 2-0 ethabond valve sutures placed in the pledgelets on the left ventricular outflow tract side. The valve was seated and tied down securely. The aortotomy was then closed in two layers with running 4-0 proline reinforced within the corners pledgelets. During the same cross clamp time, the proximal vein grafts were then anastomized to the ascending aorta to two separate circular openings using 6 0 proline suture technique. After filling the heart with blood and evacuating the air from the apex of the left ventricle with an 18 gauge needle, the cross clamp was removed and the vein graft de aired. Rewarming had begun while constructing the proximal anastomosis. While rewarming continued, two temporary arter arterial, temporary ventricular, and temporary ground pacing wires were placed, as well as two Blake drains for me mediastinal drainage. Once the patient reached a rectal temperature of 36 degrees, he was weaned off cardiopulmonary bypass without any inotropic support and without any difficulties. The venous cannula was removed. 
the heparin was reversed with potamine and the aortic cannula was removed. The mediastinum was irrigated with copious amounts of saline and bacitracin solution using the pulse lavage irrigator. The sternum was reapproximated with a surgical pioneer sternal cable system using four figure of eight cables. After pulse irrigating and pulse lavaging the fascia and subcutaneous tissue, the incision was closed in layers with vicryl and the skin reapproximated with a subcuticular plosure and telfasterol dressing was applied. There were no addition difficulties and the patient was taken to the ICU in stable condition. Your time begins now. Thank you, Miss Vivian. What a phenomenal work you have done reading out that big scenarios. I think that was the biggest scenario we had for the, the day so far. So thank you so much, Miss Vivian. And Kodas, I think you have got more than two and a half minutes. Miss Vivian was reading it out for nearly one minute, I guess. So you got more than two and a half minutes. And let's solve the scenario. I'll go a little bit quick for this one. Please let me know if you have any doubt. Okay, the preoperative, postoperative diagnosis are same. Uh, this is sever uh, severe two vessels, coronary artery disease with a moderate uh, valve aortic stenosis. Operation performed is a triple vessel coronary artery bypass grafting. So, coders, it is very important for uh, while coding the CABG procedures to know how many grafts are involved. So, this is a triple vessel coronary artery bypass. So, 50% uh, of your job is done if you know uh, uh, how many uh, grafts are used and which one is used arteries or veins, and number of arteries and vein grafts which is used. So, uh, try maximum to get it correct. Okay, next one, uh, left internal mammary artery to the left anterior descending coronary artery. Reverse the finest vein to the first diagonal uh, branch. Ramus intermedius uh, and a ramus intermedius as well. And the second procedure which is performed is aortic valve replacement with a 23 mm bovine pericardial bioprocessus. 
and the uh, we have a uh, patient was presented with an unstable angina pectoris and he was anesthetized without any incident the median uh, median sternotomy was performed uh, the left internal mammary artery was dissected off the great saphenous vein was endoscopically endoscopically uh, hard rested pericardium was opened a patient was placed on a coronary uh, i'm sorry cardiopulmonary bypass the ramus intermedius was identified as well as the diagonal branch which was small the arrest with uh, uh, the heart was arrested with a coal enriched blood cardioplegia the ramus intermedius was opened first and end to end anastomosis using a segment of reverse saphenous vein was done the first uh, diagonal branch was grafted with the second segment of the reverse saphenous vein the left internal mammary uh, artery was anastomosed uh, to the left anterior descending coronary artery uh, in an end to end fashion next procedure the aorta was opened the annulus size to 23 mm pericardial tissue valve the model was there's a model given out there and the valve uh, valve was sutured the aortomy was then closed in two layers and he was weaned off the cardiopulmonary bypass with the difficulty and the answer to the question will be option d so let's solve this one these are our procedure inventories we are having a, a bypass which is performed triple vessel bypass uh, we have used one artery which is left internal mammary artery which is uh, grafted to a left anterior descending coronary artery we are having two veins reverse saphenous veins uh, one to the first diagonal branch and next to the ramus intermediates and we are having aortic valve replacement also performed which is done using bovine pericardial bioprosthesis okay And the diagnosis inventory we are having aortic valve stenosis and we are also having atherosclerotic heart disease of coronary artery with angina unstable angina pectoris and this is our friend our FTR we have to look into the type of arteries uh, or veins used we are having a combination here we are having artery and vein use number of graft we are having three grafts all harvest uh, all the grafts are harvested except the upper extremities are bundled if combination code always use the first arteries then uh, codes from the for the veins from the combination section and endoscopic harvests are also coded along so these are our procedures yes now let's look into option a 33406 which is coding for a replacement of aortic valve open with cardiopulmonary bypass with allograft. So coders, have you used an allograft over here? An allograft is a tissue that is transplanted from one person to another. So here we have used a pericardial uh, bovine pericardial bioprocesses. This is not an allograft. So uh, we will be straight away eliminating that one option a here we go and let's look at the option b 33405 which is replacement of aortic valve open with cardio uh, cardiopulmonary bypass with prosthetic valve other than a homograft or st uh, stentless valve this is our code 33405 and you can see into the remaining options b c and d is having all the first two and the last cpt code same only difference is in the third cpt code so that we can concentrate uh, on the third one okay let's look into option b now we have already taken the first code 33405 which will be our code selection 
Now let's look into the add-on code use endoscopic uh, 33508, which is coding for endoscopic harvest of the vein or yes, vein or the artery. That is our code. And next one, 33533. And that is coronary artery bypass graft uh, using atrial graft. As I said, we are having uh, one artery and two veins. So first we will have to code for the arteries 33533, 3, 3, which is the first artery. Next, we will take the code from the vein section. That is combination code. Let's see what's our next code is. It is 33511. 33511 is coding for coronary artery bypass, vein only, two coronary venous graft use. So in this scenario, we are having two veins and one artery. So as I said in the previous scenario as well, we can't use uh, the artery code and venous code separately. We have to use arteries code from this particular portion, arteries alone and vein code from the combination part. So that will help us eliminate option B. Now let's look into option C, which is coding for 33405. We already taken 33405, 33533. That also already be taken. And next one, 33517. Let's see what 33517 is coding for. Venus graft and atrial graft, single uh, vein graft. So as I said, we are having a uh, two veins used, not a single vein used. And let's lo also look into option D, which is coding for 33518, which is the code language says a coronary artery bypass graft, bypass using venous graft and atrial graft to venous grafts. So let's cross check with the procedure inventory. Once again, we are having one artery, which will be coding for 33. 533 and we are having two veins use graft so that the code will be let's see it will be 33518 along with it we will have to code for the endoscopic harvest and the aortic valve replacement i mean aortic yes aortic valve replacement so the correct answer will be option D. Is there any questions for this scenario coders? Can you please go back to the previous screen? I didn't take the screenshot. Okay, uh, I will just go back. Give me a second. A lot of on clicks for this. Okay, coders, you can take the screenshot now. Okay, I see a question. I still don't see uh, two veins on the scenario. You can look over here. It states a reverse saphenous vein to the first diagonal branch and ramdus intermedius. So this is uh, the vein which is used for to uh to graft two positions you can see reverse saphenous vein to first diagonal branch as well as it is grafted to ramdus intermediates the reverse uh, saphenous vein is which we used as a graft it's not a first diagonal branch or the ramdus intermediate which we use uh, which we take as a vein we are coding for the grafts i hope uh, that was clear so in CABG, we'll be coding for the graphs coders. You have to look into number of uh, graphs and the type of graphs which is taken rather than where it is grafted to. Am I clear coders? Any questions on this scenario? I had to go a little bit fast because this was a long scenario. And spend a little bit more time. Yes. So I hope you have taken the screenshot. 
So if you need any uh, clarity on this scenario, please let me uh, please email me uh, with a screenshot so that I can help you with it. Okay. Okay, I hope that was clear as well. So that ends up our cardiovascular system. Thank you, Mr. Sandeep, for those AMCI amazing and awesome explanations. Miss Eva, for being the orchestrator and conductor of the best interns on the planet. Yes, I said it. Miss Melissa, Anubama, Courtney, Carla, let's get it, let's code, Dolly and Miss Vivian. And let's not forget our interns in the chat led by Miss Biji. And you, the students, you all are simply the best and we appreciate you. And we will see you next time for more great scenarios. You don't want to miss it. And thank you for participating in the AMCI Medical Coding course. Until next time. Mm -hmm.